the first church that was shown in this video here um, was one of my favorite days of ministry. Um, there was a lot of ministry going on. We were at 9, 10, 11, 12. We, we started losing count of the churches. It was just a lot that the Lord had us go and minister to the people, serve the community, do all that. But um, that one church particularly, um, it is a predominantly Nicaraguan community. Um, this pastor, um, just an incredible man of God, he's just been faithful to um, serve the people. And their church, which is awesome, is growing through COVID. Um, and I just see that as just God's hand of provision over them um, and that he is just strengthening that pastor, those leaders, the, the church family to keep on keeping on because as we know, um, nothing can come against the kingdom of God. Not COVID, no, in Jesus' name. Um, so anyway, so that was my favorite day. You saw some video on it. Um, we landed up, hand, we, they set up the, the truck you saw and, and the speakers and, and Justin has... Um, made his vehicle so he can plug in power. It's awesome. So he can do street ministry anywhere, any country that they go into. And um, so they did that, and and we landed up uh, sh uh, handing out these uh, bracelets. You know the glow in the dark, the little things you snap and stuff? Um, Christy landed up giving me a whole box right before we left. She's like, here, use this. There's like hundreds in there. Um, and that landed up being such a blessing, those little glow-in-the-dark bracelets. Um, at, we would hand them out at churches and stuff. But this particular neighborhood was really cool. So we started walking down the neighborhood while the music was playing, and, and we started giving the kids bracelets. And they came out of every, like little cucarachas, like they just came out of everywhere. And then they were like getting their sisters and their cousins and everything. It was so fun. And um, so we, we, were, we did all that. The kids loved it. I mean, there was just a swarm of kids. And then Alpha, um, we kind of get back, gather together, and Alpha goes, okay, let's start praying with people, like walking down the street with the um, families. A lot of them were sitting on their porches on a, I don't know what day it was, we lost track of the day, but someday we were out there and, and just pray with people, ask if they want prayer and all that. And the Lord spoke to me right then in that moment, I started walking down the street, and the kids were following us everywhere. And the Lord's like, that's who I want you to pray for right there. I have them right at your feet, you know. So we landed up, um, uh, Camilla was there to help translate, and we landed up praying with the kids, and they were so receptive, you know. Um, a lot of them knew who God was, had some type of, you know, probably from that pastor and the leaders and the, the Christians in the community, but um, we just prayed over them, and the scripture that comes to my mind for that is Matthew 19, 13 through 15. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. And I definitely see, you know, when, when we were praying for the kids and God was just kind of showing me this community and also just Costa Ricans and, and here in this neighborhood, everything, everywhere we go, right, is that that is our next generation. And I was looking at these kids and yes, they're in a neighborhood and they're, they're play, that's where they're growing up. And a lot of them didn't even have shoes on their feet, you know, just running around the dirty street. Um, but, you know, they still had a lot of life in them and their faces and everything. And, and the Lord's like, you know, if you, if we can reach, if you guys are willing to reach these kids at this age, how, gr how many great and wonderful things they can do for the kingdom of heaven. They don't have to live this life um, of, you know, addiction, destruction, hopelessness, any of that. They can begin that relationship with the Lord right here, right now, and um, just be an awesome vessel for the Lord. And um, so I, I love doing the kids' outreaches and stuff for that reason, um, particularly. And um, one other thing I wanted just to end here with is something that the Lord really pointed out with that all the churches we went to, there were two churches that really, something stood out to me. That church that I was telling you about, the Nicaraguan pastor, and you remember the guy in the video that waved by, you know, Colby did an awesome uh, shot there. Um, those two churches have grown through COVID. 
a lot of the other churches that we love all the pastors and everything, but a lot of the other churches were not seeing as much growth um, or had decreased. Like same with our churches here, you know, they decreased in people. But in those two churches, they have grown so much that that one church, the Nicaraguan church was building onto his church because he couldn't hold all the people, which was incredible. And what both of those pastors had in common is that they stayed very faithful and they, um, I, you can tell they really sought the Lord on what they were supposed to do in this time. And they did not hold back. They kept pressing forward in the Lord, advancing his kingdom. The, one pa- the other pastor that waved, he, um, he said from the very beginning, he's like, I feel like God has called me to go to every single uh, people's ho- everyone's houses. And people who even had COVID, he had no fear. He would go straight into their houses. He would lay hands on them. He would pray for them. He would communicate with the church body what the needs were. The other church members would come together like the Axe Church. And people lost their jobs for like four months because that was that's a huge, uh, Santa Teresa is a real huge um, uh, vacation spot. And so that shut down immediately when COVID came. So a lot of them lost their jobs. No income. You're talking their $400 a month income is what they make. Went to zero. They had no food. Couldn't pay their rents. Could nothing. Utilities. But you know what the Lord did? He He provided through the body of Christ. And people stood up and brought meals to each other. Helped pay each other's bills. Literally lived out the Acts 2 church that God has called us. And that church has seen great growth in people. Not just like on a number scale too, which that was growing, but also they are just full of joy. They are excited. They want to do more outreach. So God really um, is just moving greatly in their in their uh, churches. Both of those churches were growing. And I'm going to leave with this scripture when I was thinking about those churches, the Lord reminded me of when the Israelites were being oppressed by the Egyptians. And Exodus 1.12 says, but the more they were afflicted, the more that the Egyptians afflicted the Israelites, the more they multiplied and grew. Amen. <laughs> Alpha let us know that we had four minutes to tell you everything that happened in Costa Rica. (laughs) Uh, It's not going to happen. I thought I was going to tell you the same thing that I told the first service. God changed that. And um, Gabriel, would you stand up, please? Everybody. So, you guys are wondering what we did in Costa Rica? You're about to see it. You're supposed to go to Costa Rica next year. You don't have a direction or a plan. You don't know where you're supposed to be going. That's to be provided for you. That's the direction you're supposed to go. Mom, Jeremiah 29, 11. That scripture. Yep, let me get it. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we'd ask that you would continue to put your hands on Gabriel. Lord, you would ask that you give him the identity that he's supposed to have. And this banner is supposed to go where the flag was. Jeremiah 29, 11. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we did in Costa Rica. We did it for the 10, 11, 12 days that we were there. We started with interpreters talking into people, trying to find out what was going on in their lives. After a while, there wasn't enough interpreters for the people we were praying with. But that didn't stop the Holy Spirit. We were praying in English, and people were shaking and quaking, And God was speaking to their lives, in their lives, at that place, at that time. We were were praying and ministering to people, and God was the interpreter. Did I do it in four minutes? (laughs) 
Hi, I'm Kimmy. <laughs> Um, first, I just want to say that um, this trip was different for me than any of the others because the team had this incredible joy and thankfulness um, throughout. Whether we were experiencing something hard or something good, it didn't matter. In everything, there was joy and gratefulness and laughter. And it didn't matter if we were stuck in the mud or up at 3.30 in the morning. It didn't matter. It was just an incredible, incredible team that just had their hearts right before the Lord. And thank you, team. I'm just, I'm so grateful for that. I want to tell you about a family that lives in Kabuya. Uh, Kabuya, Kabuya is where, is the village where uh, Justin and Griffin live um, and where we sleep. And we just go out from there and do ministry. So there's a family there that um, has been there since the town began, which is about 65 years ago. And um, this family uh, is not liked in the community. In fact, um, some people hate them, are scared of, scared of them, are bitter towards them, um, because it is uh, rumored that they are responsible for some horrible crimes in the community that happened, I think, a couple decades ago. Um, and so this family is very protective of themselves. There's multiple generations that live on their property. Um, the grandparents own the property, and they have seven sons, a bazillion grandchildren, and I think they might have some great-grandchildren. So um, that's how long they've been there. Um, this is somebody that Justin and Griffin have tried to reach. They often do home visits in the community um, just to share with people and get to know them and, and share the gospel with them and love on them and find out their needs and stuff. They have never been able or been invited onto this family's property. Um, they've had tiny conversations at the property line and stuff. And before we came, before our group came, um, Justin noticed that the main roof of the mother, mother and father's house was leaking, that their roof was bad. And he asked one of the sons, hey, I have a group coming. If the group is able to purchase a roof for your mother, would you receive it? And they said yes. And he asked them, well, would you sons be able to do the work? to actually replace, and they said yes, that they knew how and they would do that. So um, when we, uh, we had just been in Kabu Kabuya like two days, um, we broke up in groups to go do ministry, and um, a small group of us got to go to the edge of the property and tell the family that the roof had been ordered and that it would be there in a few days. So we got to deliver that good news, and Justin said, um, see what the Lord will do maybe ask them if you can visit with them. He said, but we've never been on the property. So we went, we um, delivered the good news. Alpha, had, we had the interpreter, Camilo, and Alpha told, you know, Camilo to tell them, the roof has been ordered and it's going to be delivered on Thursday, which was really, it's really fun to tell somebody, you know, to bring them a, a good gift like that. It was really fun to deliver that news. So then, uh, you know, we asked, Alpha asked, can, can we come and talk to you, visit with you for a little bit? Took a couple of seconds. Yeah, come on. So uh, we got out of the van. It was just like six of us. And uh, Keith and I, uh, Keith brought his guitar. And so we followed and made some small talk and stuff and uh, went up onto the porch. And we asked them to sit down. And, and we asked if we could sing to them. And so we were able to do the blessing in Spanish, sing the blessing over them and it was just this amazing feeling, and um, the, the dad, he cried while we sang, and the mother was just um, looking at the ground most of the time, but just you could just see the Holy Spirit working in her and ministering to her, and at the end of the singing, um, I'm going to throw this little nugget in here. I didn't share this in first service. One of the sons was super, super controlling and spoke English and was trying to control before we even got to minister to them. And Gordon was used to the Lord to um, walk off to another piece of the property with him and minister to him and engage with him, which was so amazing because that enabled us to really do what we felt the Lord, the Holy Spirit was asking us to do, to minister to um, the, you know, the mom and dad who they were in charge, you know, in charge of this whole family. So, um, I sh was able to share my testimony with them, and that was an incredible thing for um, me. I was really excited to do that. I just knew on the way driving there in the van, I just knew the Holy Spirit said, you're not going to share in a church this year. You're going to share with this family. So I just shared with them 
some of the unspeakable parts of my testimony. And, um, yeah, it just released something in them. And, and the father, he just continued to cry the whole time I was telling him about my experiences in life and what God has done for me. And uh, at the end of that, Alpha just asked them, do you want to be born again? Do you want to receive Jesus today? And they said yes. So it's such a good thing because we were just like basically walked in, picked the fruit. And that's just such an honor when you think about all the people that have prayed for decades, tilling the soil and being faithful, and God allowed us to get to pick the fruit. It's unbelievable. So, um, and just for God to open those doors, you know, because people had said, oh, don't go on their property. It's very dangerous, those kind of things. And right afterwards, we went uh, to lunch at the Benedict's house and the other teams that had gone and prayed for people in different parts of the town. We all got to share, report what, what happened. And he said, what did they say? Were they excited about the roof? Oh, yeah, they were excited about the roof. Wait, did they, were you able to visit with them? Oh, yeah, we went on the property. What? <laughs> Justin was like, you did not. I was like, yeah, we went on the property. He's like, that's amazing. And they let you talk to them? Yeah, and they got born again. What? <laughs> they were like, and I could hear him. Justin was like, Griffin. He's yelling across to the kitchen. He's in the kitchen with the kids. Griffin, they, they went on the property. It was just so amazing. So, um, and then we had an immediate follow-up, which was super cool um, because we, we had talked to them about the word and about how the word of God was Jesus and that if they would get the word, then they would be able to um, transform themselves with the word of God and their whole family. And so um, the very next morning, Justin and Griffin took them Bibles and were invited onto their property. <laughs> so this is such an amazing thing. Yeah. So anyways, I wanted to share that story. It's it was super blessed to me. Tony? Hello. Hey, I'm, to I'm Tony, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so a little bit of a follow-up and from what Kimmy was talking about, too. Um, while we were on the property, one of the sons, he, from, he was, hangs out in Montezuma, and for a lot of people that don't know, Montezuma is a destination town for drugs and other demonic things, but uh, he had recognized us because a couple of years ago we got to go into Montezuma and do some street ministry, and he remembered us doing that, and he was like, hey, I remember you guys, and after you did the street ministry, preached the gospel, uh, gospel in Montezuma, the whole town has changed. It's The atmosphere is different there to this day, and so that was amazing to see that some of the seeds that we had planted previously are still, still growing, and so the, some of the other things you guys see in the video. <laughs> uh, so that was something that I had prayed about when I was praying about going on the mission trip in the first place because I was unsure if I was supposed to go this year. And, and the Lord just put it on my heart that it was time to take the next step in our relationship and move forward and that my past, I could let go of that finally and that the healing was there now. And so it's been a long time coming, but... <laughs> That was great. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing every time you go down there. It's not only are you helping other people, but there's also a lot of growth, growth in yourself as well when you go down. So anybody that's thinking about going on the trip, definitely pray about it and God will provide. Thank you guys for watching, even though you didn't really have a choice. <laughs> if you guys do want to watch it and share it with your friends, it's on YouTube. Just go to the Revolution Church Portland, and it's probably the first one up there. Um, this was my first missions trip, and hopefully not my last. I can't wait to go on another one. Um, Costa Rica is definitely life-changing. It's such a beautiful place. People are amazing. Uh, the fruit is very fruitful and very tasteful. Um, so I did not expect to get delivered when I was there. Um, I thought this could be mainly for everybody else that wasn't American and on the church group. So uh, the place we were at where I got delivered basically was different than any other land that we were at. Um, 
the grass was greener, the palm trees were bigger, just everything felt more spiritual, I guess. Um, what's weird is that I was setting up, and I'm normally in the very back. Alpha walks up, and he goes, hey, this could be a powerful night for you. And I'm like, oh, no. He's like, not tonight. <laughs> um, but the word that he was spoken, or speaking about that night was addiction and all those kind of things. And that spoke to me 100%. So that day, I basically just, as you saw in the video, just crumbled, cried, and that day I felt very released, and it was just breathtaking and amazing. Um, throughout the whole trip, every place we went to, there was people that would pray over somebody and was trying to bring up a scripture, and somebody was like, hey, I can't remember what the scripture was. Somebody else was like, hey, I read that this morning or last night, and the odds of that happening are like one in a billion. It's like picking up the dictionary and saying, hey, this is what I read today. It's like, how is that possible? Um, the fact that we didn't get stuck or flip the car, because you saw the, the transport vans we were in, we were not in lifted vehicles at all, like the Benedicts had. They had nice tires, lifted trucks. So the fact that we didn't crash and we didn't die, <laughs> blessing. <laughs> um, the fact that we also made it back all together was amazing. Sorry to call it another family. Um, basically, as you saw in the video, the whole, whole airport shut down, which never happens. Um, the fact that we all got to leave together was amazing because honestly it shouldn't have happened. Um, but we all made it back alive and we can't wait to go again and hopefully you guys come with us next year because it was a lot of fun. Even though we had 18 people, we want more. Um, so yeah, hope to see you guys next time. Thank you, Colby. So I have exciting news for you. Uh, missions training begins right now. I'm training you to be a missionary and an evangelist every Sunday you come to church. Amen? So we don't preach a comfortable Christianity here or consumer-driven Christianity here. We are raising you up to be evangelists and missionaries for the kingdom of God. Amen? So we expect that everything that you take and receive and absorb when you come to church, when you go to the respective home groups and go to discipleship, that you would allow God to use you and you would apply what you're learning and start with your neighbors, your family members, your coworkers, and then when we do the things that we do out of state and in our city, you're not looking at each other like this is strange to you, to love on and reach out to the lost. This should be your, at this church, that's your DNA. That's a part of who you are. Amen? Um, Montezuma is very much like Portland. Honestly. And one of the things I remember in Montezuma is we did a really quick outreach. I mean, I think it was 30 minutes. And that's how you had to do it there. And the power of God was so strong. And there was actually way more people that wanted to hear the gospel than you would think. Imagine setting up in downtown Portland in the middle of Antifa and BLM at Waterfront and preaching the gospel, and you're expecting everybody to hate you, but actually the opposite happened. There were tourists and people who lived in the city and business owners that came outside to see what was going on, and it was literally a 30-minute thing. And I kid you not that there was, a, there was a man who manifested a demon and grabbed the microphone out of our translator's hand and said, don't listen to these people. It's too late for you. You're all, you're all doomed. And then he took off. But you know what happened? People got saved that day. And three of the people who got saved were business owners that were up on a balcony watching us. And one of them said, we had been waiting for someone like you guys to come along here. And they weren't saved. They got saved that day. And can I tell you something? In this neighborhood that we live in of Southeast Portland in the Lentz neighborhood, this is a, is a mission field just like in Costa Rica. Shame on us if we will go all out and reach the lost in Costa Rica, but we won't do it right here. And I want to tell you something. I can't do it by myself. Just like it takes a team for us to minister in Costa Rica, it takes a team to do the ministry right here. Now, I understand that it is a part of our American custom to come to church and for us to get benefit and to have a great time at it together and just have a great worship service. But I want to flip the script on you today. I want you to understand that church is not just supposed to be that, but church is also supposed to be a place where 
God can use the whole body of Christ to be ministers, young people and older people and everybody in between. So I want you to understand that at Revolution Church, yes, we want to have church. Yes, we want to be in the presence of God together. Yes, we want to fellowship. We want to eat. We want to have fun. We want to do all that stuff. But let me tell you something else that we need to do. We need to be intentional and effective at preaching the gospel to everybody around us in little ways and big ways, in proclamation evangelism and on one-on-one. And that's what I'm pumped up and excited about. And that's what we are about as a church. Now, something else you should know about us is we're like a family. So we actually care about each other. And when we ask questions like, how you doing, we really do mean, how you doing? And um, we also notice when you're not here. Nobody's keeping tabs on you. We just notice when you're not there. Don't you notice when your kids aren't there for dinner? <laughs> you notice that stuff. So, so when you come and you say you belong to this church, we, we actually look for you. We actually like look forward to seeing you. And when we don't see you, we're like, oh, I wonder where so-and-so is. Are they doing okay? Oh, I'm not sure. Hey, give them a call, would you, and find out where they're at. You might not get a call from me, but you should get a call from somebody here at the church. I can't, I can't wear all the hats. We got several people that wear hats here. And um, pray for us as we're praying for you. Because, because of the kind of church we are and because of where we're at and where God has called us and placed us, I can guarantee you that the leadership of this church gets attacked all the time from the top down. My wife and I have just gotten used to it. We just kind of figure, oh, it's just another day. And some things really hurt, and some things don't hurt as bad. But you know what? It's not, it's not the same for everybody here at the church. Some people get hit with something. It hits them harder than it might hit someone else who's used to it. So pray for us as we're also praying for you. As we're praying for each other and holding each other up, we can be strong. We can be in unity together. And... Um, we, we got donated a van. Somebody gave us a van, 15-passenger van. It needs, it needs about $1,500 of repairs. So if you want to donate to that, let us know. But this is a diesel, this is a champion of a church van. Like, we could probably take this all the way to Costa Rica and back if we really had to. It's in great, great shape as far as that's concerned. And then somebody wants to donate to us a food truck. Somebody wants to give us a food truck, okay? Um, it's literally a food truck. I mean, it's, it's, a, uh, it's not huge. It's like a midsize small food truck that is used for serving. It was used for serving food and coffee out of it. And um, the pastor said, if you want it, come and get it. Now, it's my experience that when God starts giving you stuff, it's because he's got a purpose for the church to do something. I'm telling you that we don't need to keep praying for revival because revival is already on the way. What we need to do is pray for the church to be ready to receive everything that God has for the church to fulfill the prayer of revival. Because revival is going to come through you. It's going to come through me. It's going to come through you. Now, somebody in this church has a vision for a food truck to use for street ministry. And if that's you, I would suggest that you talk to me sometime this week so that we can get this food truck in your hands and that you can start raising funds to do the repairs in it so you can use this thing to change the city. Somebody wants to change the city with a food truck. And I'm telling you that the food truck you've been waiting for is here. Somebody has wanted a church van so they can pick kids up for church and pick up families for church. Well, the van is in our possession. It's at one of my detail shops. It's getting worked on so that we can drive it. Um, we're repainting the whole roof. Me and my guys are going to repaint the whole roof because it's pretty, pretty rusted. So we're going to take care of that. Um, I've already got it vehicle inspected. I've got to run it through DMV, DEQ, and all that stuff. But soon that church will be here. Or I'm sorry, that will be here on the church property, and anybody who says, hey, you can count on me 
to pick up people for church every Sunday. I'm going to give you the keys, and that's going to be your job in your ministry. Okay? That ministry of picking up kids and families for church is just as important as me standing here preaching to you today. That ministry of serving food to people on the streets, whether they're homeless or poor or less fortunate, whether, whether you think they're enemies or they deserve it or not, that's an opportunity. Food is an opportunity to preach the gospel. We don't do any social service stuff without being able to preach the gospel. Nobody holds our hands behind our back and says, you can't preach the gospel, we just want your money. Well, let me tell you something. We, we do what we do for the purpose of the gospel, and that's why we do it. Because I believe, like my friend Chris Overstreet, America shall be saved. And I, I might not be called to here and there and everywhere, but let me tell you where I am, right here in this city, in southeast Portland in Costa Rica with Justin and Griffin Benedict. Do you know that from this little church, this little one right here, that we gave that family $1,500, bought them a brand new air conditioner, and put a roof on two houses? Do you know that there are... Do you know that there are churches that have over 1,000 people that don't have the budget to do that? They don't have the budget to do that kind of stuff. But you know what? Revolution Church does that. You know why? Because it's part of our values and our vision. And it will remain that way. I don't care how how big the church gets. We will always be like a family. We will be missional. We will be evangelistic. And probably because we will stay that way, we might not grow that huge. Because what America is looking for is a stroke me church. And that's not this one. We want to live for Jesus. And I want to see the power of God manifested in your life and in the lives around you. I want to see you prophesy. I want to see you pray for the sick and have them be healed. I want to see you minister to people. I want to see you reach out and see broken hearts get healed. Because that is what God intended. In Acts 2.42, in all of Acts chapter 2, the reason why the Spirit of God was poured out is so that the gospel would spread and people would be saved and lives would be changed. It was, it was not so that we can be spiritually fat Christians and glorify our ourselves and be happy and do what we want to do, but we're supposed to be about the kingdom of God. And when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. You find out that everything that you've wanted, your heart's desire will come because you put God first and you put his mission first. It is not about perfection. It is about being willing. It is about being willing and letting God do his work inside you and through you every day as you commit yourself to just living for Jesus. You don't got to match yourself up to someone else or I got to live more like this person or I got to talk more like that. All you've got to do is let God do his work inside you and change your heart, change your mind, change your soul and let him use you. All you have to do is be willing. You don't have to be skilled. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be awesome. You don't have to know everything about the Bible cover to cover. All you got to do is let Jesus be Lord and be willing to let God use you however he wants to use you. And you will see the power of God manifested in your life. You will see it happen. The Bible says that (laughs) that Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner. How can the shortest man in the Bible be the most notorious sinner? And yet there are people who sit here in church every Sunday and feel like they can't utter a word of prayer or worship because they believe they're too dirty for God. You think you're such a notorious sinner? Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner. And Jesus said, I want to come to your house. That's the message I preached when I was in Montezuma is I said, Jesus wants to come to your house. I said, how many people would like to have Jesus come to their house? Do you know how many hands went up on the streets? How about you? How about you? Some of you are terrified about the thought of Jesus coming to your house. Let me tell you something. Jesus doesn't care about your mess. Jesus doesn't care about how dysfunctional you are, how messed up you are. Jesus knows you. And he knows all your struggles. And he doesn't say, oh, man, I'm so disappointed. This is what he says. Hey, I want to come to your house. 
because he loves the broken. He loves the lost. He loves the confused. He loves those who have been abused, who have been molested, who have been beaten, who have gone through divorce, who have lost loved ones, who have been lied about, who have been rejected. Jesus loves them, and he wants them. You look at his 12 disciples, you might as well call them the dirty dozen. (laughs) And most of them were fishermen. Have you ever hung out with fishermen? I am one. What happens in the boat stays in the boat. But you know what? Jesus loves every culture. He loves the culture of fishermen. He loves the culture of hunters. He loves the culture of ministry people and construction people, concrete people. He loves the ministry of those who are in organic and into this. And Jesus loves all those cultures, all those people groups. Jesus loves them. And he wants to save all of them. And he wants to use every single one of you to save every single one of them. Would you stand with me as we pray? Did you want to did you want to do the blessing while we're while we're praying? The worship team is going to sing a song over you while I'm praying for you. And then after I'm done praying, you're dismissed to enjoy some awesome food. Okay? Which is that way. So, as a matter of fact, I'll ask God to bless the food now so that you can just get down and grab on it, okay? Were you impacted today by this awesome missions team and everything? Was, it, was that great? We will take as many people as want to go, okay? We'll be going again in April, probably the middle of April. We're going to go for almost two weeks. So just have that in your thoughts and pray about it, think about it. Start saving your money, okay? About 1600 bucks a person. And uh, it sounds too big, but it's really not. You start saving now and you'll be all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving us. God, help us to be willing to save others. Bless the food we're about to eat today and bless our time of fellowship. God, we want to honor you in everything we say and do. I pray, God, that uh, today would be a great day of the beginning of allowing you to really speak and plant things in our hearts for the kingdom. We give you permission to do that, Lord. I ask your blessing upon the whole church right now. Bless each family. Bless each person. We ask for your healing hand to touch those that we know that are sick right now. If anyone has COVID, Lord, we pray for them to be be just completely healed right now. Help them to recover strong in Jesus' name. God, we pray about this uh, thing that's heavy on everyone's mind about the vaccines. And we pray, Lord, that it would not become a law. God, we just pray your will be done. I believe, God, that you gave us the president that America deserves right now. And God, you say to pray for our leaders. So we pray for Biden and Harris to get saved in Jesus' name. To submit to your word and follow your ways in Jesus' name. And Father, we also pray a special blessing because it is Memorial Day weekend on every family that has served in the military, those who have passed away. We honor them and we're thankful for those willing to sacrifice for our freedom. Bless them with a special blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, you're dismissed as the worship team sings over you. Please come eat some food. It'll be this way. Lord bless you. Just head on downstairs this way.